uh, to the next, uh, to our first discuss today. Uh, before we go to issues around the oil and gas industry, uh, let's quickly tell you that Nigeria is no doubt endowed with abundant uh, gas resources. We know that, but we'll talk about that when we get to link up with Charles Majomi, who is supposed to join us from Abuja. Uh, but before then, in compliance with uh, the National Data Protection Regulation, the National Information Technology Development Agency, NITA, uh, well, as ordered in one uh, issue, the Electronic Settlement Limited to pay the sum of 5 million naira as fined for certain breaches on personal data entrusted to the company. According to NITDA, the fine was sequel to an investigation carried out by the company, which involves uh, an analysis of the company's applications and websites. Visits to the company's office in Lagos reveals of its technical documents as submitted to the agency and interrogation of its officials by NITDA's investigation team in Abuja show that there is or uh, there was a data breach involving the company. NITDA's further explain that the fine was sequel to an investigation carried out by the company to ascertain the extent of company's personal data breach with a view to identifying the causes, remedial actions taken, and other necessary issues to avoid reoccurrence. As data becomes the crude oil of the digital economy and the rate of cybercrime continues to rise, what well, the big question now is how can we best protect our personal data? Well, I have joining me uh, live to profile answers to this question, and of course, many others along this line. She's a senior manager of Anderson Nigeria, Mrs. Yetunde Filani. Well, she recently got an award uh, for excellence in data protection and information privacy by the Young CISO uh, Network. Thank you very much for your time, and congratulations on your award. Thank you very much, Lopez. Yes, uh, it's good to start this way. Data breach and all of that. Take us through what this really means. Yes, we know it's getting into somebody's privacy, invading privacy and all of that but take us through it in that professional language of yours okay all right i'll start from the very beginning at least with respect to nigeria nitsa um, issued the nigeria data protection regulation in 2019 january 2019 and this regulation essentially um regulates how organizations both private and public, public. organizations regulate the use of um personal data. And then when we say personal data, a lot of people ask, what is personal data? Personal data relates to any information that can be used to identify a person, you know, a natural person. So it's anything from your name, your address, your date of birth, you know, and also identifiers, your, your phone number, BVN, credit, anything that relates to an individual, that's personal data. Mm -hmm. Now, um, worldwide, um, there's been regimes, you know, to put regulations in place to regulate how uh, organizations use personal data of individuals. And Nigeria is, you know, also followed that trend. Okay. Now we have the, uh, what's it called, the national, um, let me get that very correctly. But before we go there, let's now look at... Uh, who are those people successful? Who are those really, really, really vulnerable to data breach? Uh, public, private, and all of it. What would prompt someone to want to get into your personal details or get your personal data? Getting this, just as you said, data is like the new gold. If you yes. think about it, the biggest organizations in the world, they all deal with data. Look at Google, for instance. There's no tangible product you know, that you can see this organization has. They essentially deal with data, the Googles, the Facebooks, because data is very valuable. You can use it to predict behavior, and it also helps, you know, with economic activities, because if I build a profile around you, I'm, I know what you're likely to be interested in, the kind of products, you know, that would right. appeal to you, okay? So that is why data is very important. But of course, with everything that is vital, it's also open to abuse. What do we mean by abuse? Um, people have information, you know, there are criminals out there, you know, they can use that data to defraud people. Yeah. Some can even use it, you know, to, um, what's the word, to, uh, <laughs> I've, I've lost my I agenda. I get, yes, taking yes. advantage of people when, you know, when things like this exactly. happen, it's very easy for them to actually take advantage, for particularly like you talked about fraud and all these illegal activities, you know, and I'll go to what national data protection regulation really stands for. How effective would you say that body is? 
it's actually, you know, very effective. So what NIDA, you know, has put in place yeah. is that it requires organizations to put certain measures, you know, in place. The first is for you to have like a body of um, policies, okay. guidelines, you know, within your organization that determine how you lawfully collect and use and process personal data. Now, there's hardly any organization, you know, that doesn't deal with data in one way or another. Now, you've collected data for a particular purpose. Yeah. What have you used it for? Have you gotten um, appropriate consent, you know, for the use of that data? If you're going to use that data for any other purpose, then you need to get the consent of the data subject for that use, okay? I know that, you know, there were times that your phone, especially as women, is ringing and you're rushing and you just pick it up, you know, it's one telemarketing and you can really, some even call you in the middle of the night, you know, that's a breach of privacy, you know, so there are regulations around how you can deal with the personal data of individuals, you know, that you have in your custody. Okay. okay. Now, so um, let's, now, let's now talk about how do data breaches, how do they really happen when they want to happen? How does it really happen? Can you take us through that process? Okay. Well, data breaches, they happen in various, various ways. ways. Yes. So first of all, you can have, even internally, you can have internal breaches in the, um, in the sense that, you know, yeah, there are various departments within an organization. So the first thing is, have you put in appropriate measures to Please. ensure that hmm. people have information to only information that they are required to have, to have. for the purpose of, you know, the... Um, for the purpose of the processing. So you can have internal breaches, you know, where somebody that shouldn't have access has access to information. You can also have external, you know, breaches, you know, um, you know, which comes from hackers, you know, and all that. And that would that usually happens when you have made your system porous. So you haven't put appropriate measures in place. What encryption um, mechanisms do you have? Do you have appropriate antivirus? Are you updating, you know, and all that. So Data protection, I mean, is a whole spectrum. It starts, first of all, with the issues of privacy collection, you know, ensuring that you're following or in compliance with provisions of the regulation, as well as the protection measures, you know, that the, um, your IT security measures, you know, that you have put in place to ensure that your system is not porous hmm. and open to attack. So all, all of this can help us prevent against exactly. uh, breaches like this. But now, with this particular case, in, in, in citing this case now, 5 million uh, Naira fine has been put up. But before now, we didn't used to hear nip die anyway. It's just like uh, someone would say, like a tweetless dog. So uh, what's happening this time around? They have to come up and take the bull by the horn and say, yes, we are going to deal with this. Are they sending a signal or what does it mean? Yes, they are definitely sending a signal. And the reality is that NITA is not a toothless dog. Under the regulation, NITA can fine an organization up to 2% of their annual gross revenue for the preceding year. And, I mean, hear me well, gross revenue, not even profit. Some organizations don't even, uh, you know, make that much profit. So they have the powers. Now... I know that one of the approach that NITA has also taken is that, you know, this is a new regulation. It was issued in January, you know, 2019. And they kind of want organizations to move towards compliance rather than just issuing out fines. So what they've also put in place, you know, is to license organizations called Data Protection Compli mm. Compliance Organizations, DPCUs, that would work with organizations to help, you know, with audit, monitoring, you know, and training, you know, services. Another thing I'd want to say is that training is actually very, very key when it comes to the issue of data protection because usually, um, you know, your, a breach can come from anywhere. The, you know, it's, your system is only as strong as the weakest link. Hmm. True. I, I, I agree with you. But when we talk about tech, all of these rules around technology one way or the other, we still have challenges around infrastructure, around broadband, around all of that in this part of the world. How do you see that also affecting all of this? Because at times all of these defects is what these guys take advantage of. Yes, I, I hear you. But what, we, what the um, data protection is saying is that yeah. within your own sphere of influence, right, you cannot control everything as an organization. But within your, your sphere of influence as an organization, you can, you can put in place appropriate, you can put in place appropriate measures, you know, 
you can have your antivirus, you can ensure that your systems are encrypted. I don't expect you to have a system, you know, that has critical information and I just come in, slot in my, you know, flash drive and go away with critical information. Mm -hmm. Have you gotten um, appropriate locks to ensure that people cannot just take information so within the space you know of the organization there are things there are measures that can be put in place and i also talked about policies so do you have policy statements do your employees know you know that information is that that has been collected is confidential should be kept confidential should not be should not be um you know spread or sent out to the wrong party so that awareness is also very key so these are things that are within the control of the organization. It takes me to almost just to cyber crimes because this to me looks almost like <laughs> cyber crimes that we all hear of and we see. Uh, you know, so um, talking about database security, let's talk a little bit ab about that. How well are we doing in this part of the world when it comes to securing all our ends? Because you see banks uh, going all around, but we still see. We watch on television. We are journalists here. We report these things. We we'll still see someone telling you that if I get out of your phone where you get a lot, yes. I can rip your account. I can take all the money in your account. So when you see these things, I get so worried and I take my phone and I keep it so closely to me with a little change I have in my <laughs> account. But seriously speaking, how well are we doing with security? You know? Well, the, the reality is that security, data security, is not just a Nigerian problem. Yeah. You know, it's universal, it's yeah, global. True. So what laws or regulations like the NDPR, you know, data protection laws also help to do is to put frameworks, you know, around this. So as an organization, right, if you know that... Um, employees are going to have sensitive information on their devices, then you can set up more security around their devices, things around um, passwords, two-factor authentication, you know, other things, you know, that would allow you to have a more robust system, you know, to protect it. Those are, those are the only things, you know, that you can, those are the things that you can put in place. Mm. There's no, you know, completely foolproof system. Yeah. But of course, you must show that, you must be able to demonstrate that you have put appropriate measures in place to ensure that you've protected the organization from any foreseeable hazard. You know, anything that, you know, can be foreseen, but I mean... Laws are very sweet to 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 uh, be put together by government, but compliance is something that is also uh, very very key uh, when we talk about this. So as as uh, an operator, because for you adversaries and all of that, you meet clients and all of that. What are you talking to them now, really, about data at this time? Data is really king. We know what happened during the lockdowns. Mm -hmm. Everybody in and all we all relied on data what advice is what are you going to be advising clients at the moment to do in regards to all of this moving on in the year in fact i think the covid 19 pandemic actually brought a lot of things to fore you know nobody believed that you could have your employees working <laughs> remotely for a whole month a whole you month. know I tell you. even for some people have worked remotely for over a year yes. you know so it kind of helps you to stress test your systems you know now more than Ever, the issues issues around privacy, issues around protection, the IT security and protection are very critical, you know. So what I'll tell organizations is that you must have a robust, you know, IT security measure in place, have the appropriate team, you know. And it, the interesting thing is that some of these um, tools are actually free, you know. Some come, you know, with your operating system mm. and all that, but people just don't take advantage of it, you know. So there's BitLocker that, you know, you can install if you have Office 365. There are measures that you can put in place. And, of course, it's important to, you know, speak to professionals, you know, um, NIPDA says work with your DPCO, that's Data Protection Compliance Organization, which under syntax is one of, you know, speak to the professionals. We've done this, we've worked with, you know, various organizations, okay? And um, your IT infrastructure has to be fit for purpose. There isn't necessarily mm. a one-size-fits-all. Mm. So you must work with what you have.
Before I let you go, I was reading through uh, before I got you in on the show talking about impact assessments that need that deed uh, before they came up with this uh, resolution and the fine. What was the, what's the process of the impact assessment uh, on some of the data intensive application products? Fantastic. So part of what the NDPR requires organizations to do is to conduct data privacy or data impact assessment. Yes. Now, Especially as a result of the remote work and all that, organizations, some organizations have, have had to develop, you know, apps, get more information, you know, about their um, employees, products, you know, a lot of people have gone online. So what an impact assessment helps you to do is to, first of all, review, you know, that product, that application, and assess any privacy risk, you know, that may be in inherent, you know, in that product. And it also, it now helps you to put appropriate measures, you know, to mitigate any data privacy or data protection risk. So it's expected that before every project or de before deploying any technology, an impact assessment is actually conducted because that is the only way that you can assess and mitigate any privacy risk. Departing short from you, what else do you think we need to know about this very important uh, thing before I let you go? You are, you are an award winner, uh, data protection and information. I can see that even uh, as you're making me understand all of this, and I'm sure Nigerians are also getting to really understand uh, this. What more do we need to know? Well, the only thing I would say is that organizations need to be proactive active don't wait until the regulator comes knocking on your door yeah, some organizations sure. will say oh but i mean i'm one in a million why is it minute that would come to it's not even about whether the regulator comes to find you or not right. it's about having a system in place you know that protects your organization and it's about building confidence you know um, your customers have confidence in your products you know in your services when you have a robust system you know that is well protected it's good to have you join us on the show. I definitely would like to have you again when we have anything to discuss around data, around uh, anything that has to do with the ICT. I think we'll need to have you again on the All show. Right. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Mrs. Yetude Filani. She's a senior manager at Anderson Nigeria, uh, you know, talking to us so very much uh, issues around data breaches and how that affects businesses, of course, public and private sector. Thank you again for your Thank time. Thank you very much, Lila. All right.